In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to set up these tungsten halogen lights. Now, these types of lights come with a number of advantages and disadvantages. One of the advantages of these lights is that they create a single light source, which also means they create a single shadow. Some LED lights, because they have a number of bulbs, create multiple light sources and multiple shadows. That's not going to be true with these types of lights. These lights also can be extremely hard lights if we don't use a diffuser like this one here, or if we use a diffuser, they can be extremely soft. They can also be focused, like this particular light, we can have a very narrow beam or kind of spread that beam out. In regards to color temperature, they can be adjusted by the use of gels. Because these lights are tungsten halogen, they are on the kind of the low color temperature, which means they're kind of yellow. And if we need to raise that color temperature, or if we want to give any cooler emotional feel, we're going to have to use some sort of gel. The other thing about using the gels, we could also then balance these types of lights with LED lights or even fluorescent lights and even daylight by balancing it using the gels. So that's just kind of an overview of these types of lights and we're going to put each one of them together so you can use them to build your lighting sets. When you first open the light kit, be mindful of where everything is. The first thing that you'll see is that you've got this bag that has your softbox light. Beneath that, there is a number of stands. And next to that, in the other section, you'll find you have light modifiers like this umbrella or the gel frame and maybe some gels as well. In that other section, you will have this small spotlight, a Lowell Pro, a horizontal light like this V light, or the other light kit has the total light, which is also horizontal, your power cables, and an Omni light. There's also some clips that you can use to attach the gels. And then in the top, you have your instruction manuals and a flag that you can use to help shape the light and also uh, these which are used to help hold the flag so you can shape that light. The first thing we're going to take a look at though is how to set up the light stands. There's actually two light stands in these kits. There's a smaller light stand like this one here and then one that's a little bit bigger I'll show you how to set up both of these light stands. And I'm going to go ahead and start with this larger one. Now we use the larger light stand for our softbox because it's a bit heavier. First thing you want to do when opening this up, loosen this lower nut just a little bit and then kind of pull those legs open. And once they're spread out, go ahead and lock that back down. To raise and lower columns, just loosen the nut and put it at the desired height. Now these stands are not air cushioned, so if you release this, it will fall down and will not have any cushioning, nothing to slow it down, so you do need to be extremely careful. The other thing is when using these light stands, both the larger one and the smaller one, if you need to rotate a light, always loosen the column. So loosen it so that it can rotate freely and then tighten it down. Now, with the smaller light stand, it's very similar, but you're going to notice that the legs on this, once I loosen this lower nut, they spread out from the top. And we can open it up then like that and lock it down. Now, for this particular light stand, you do want to make sure that it isn't too narrow where it's going to tip over, nor do we want it so low that it becomes a bit more of a tripping hazard. So something that has a little bit of a center lower center of gravity, but not taking up a lot of space. And otherwise, these light stands operate pretty much the same way. Now that we have these light stands set up, we're going to go ahead and put some lights on them.
The first light I'm going to show you how to use is this Omni light. When you pull the light out of the bag, the handle is actually rotated up because it's easier to pack that way. But you want to rotate that handle down so that you can actually control the light angle with this pivot like this. And then also you have easier access to this thumb knob that allows you to focus the light or to go with a kind of a broader throw. In order to put this on the light stand, you want to make sure that you rotate this coupling down so that it can go on top of the light stand. So I loosen the nut on it, place it on the light stand, tighten it on, and then it is set. And again, if I want to rotate the angle left and right, I want to loosen a column. And then the light can also be rotated up and down using the handle. On the front of this light, you're going to see that you have these barn doors. The barn doors allow you to shape the light. So when you first open it up, you can take a look on the inside of it, but these flags spread out so that you have even more control over that light shaping. And then you can get a very narrow beam or you can kind of widen it up. This can also be removed. To remove it, just flap all of these flags back in. And then pull it off the rim of the light and it should come off just like that. Now you will notice that this light has a protective screen on it. This light must be operated using this protective screen because if the bulb were to explode or fail, pieces of it could come out and we want to make sure that people are safe on the set. So this light will always be used with this protective screen. The other thing to mention about these tungsten halogen lights is that you never want to touch the bulb. And this screen protects it, but there are some of the lights that have an open bulb. So you don't want to touch the bulb. Even when replacing a bulb, you don't want to hold the actual glass because the oils in your fingers can cause that light to fail faster. So you would hold it with a paper towel in order to put a bulb in or to remove a bulb. But always use a protective screen or some covering that has been designated for that light. Now if I'm going to rotate this back around, you can kind of take a look at some of the controls on this light. You'll notice there's not a light switch. That's because for this particular light, the switch is in line on the power cable. The other thing you will notice on here is that it has this lever or this arm that moves up and down. So if we wanted to attach a gel to change the color temperature or a diffuser, we'll move it up into the top position. If we wanted to attach an umbrella, we would rotate it down here. And like I said earlier, this is how we could adjust that focus. First thing I want to show you is plugging it in and powering it up and then you can kind of see how that spot works with the focus. In the light kit you're going to notice that there are different power cables. There's one power cable that does not have a switch built into it and one that does have an inline switch. For a light like this Omni light, we're going to make sure that we use the one that has the switch because the Omni light does not have a built in switch. When plugging it in, we make sure that we plug in the light or the power into the light head before we plug it into the wall. Now before I power this thing up, I'm going to show you how to connect some of the light modifiers. There are different light modifiers that we can put on the Omni light. One is an umbrella that we can use to soften the light because these Omni lights are quite hard lights and in order to connect it, we want to make sure that we rotate this arm down, loosen this nut a little bit, and then expand the umbrella and place it into the hole and slot and tighten it down. And when you have this in there, be mindful of this rod that sticks out because it can be quite dangerous. So be mindful as you're walking around the set and also as you're setting things up. Now this Umbrella, again, can be used to soften the light, 
Two ways to do that. One is to shoot the light straight through it and create soft light by using the umbrella itself as a diffuser or by bouncing light off of it back onto the set with a very diffused wide throw to it. But again, you will lose a lot of intensity if you're going to be bouncing it and yet it will definitely be softer. The other light modifier that we can place on here is a gel frame. And the gel frame is used to connect gels or other diffusers. To expand the gel frame, just pull it open like this, rotate this arm, and it's going to go back into here. But in order to use it, we want to rotate the arm up into the top position. Loosen the nut, slide it into this slot, and then tighten it down. And when I put it in, I try not to expand it all the way because when I attach the gel, sometimes they're a little small and I will tighten it and expand it after I attach, attach the gel. Now there's a couple of things you can attach to it. One, you can attach something like this blue gel and what this would be used to do is to cool off, emotionally that is, cool off the look because these are a very yellow light. So this will be used to cool the emotional feel but actually raise the color temperature. You can also use a diffuser like this. Now the diffusion of this type of plastic material is not going to be the same as the diffusion from the umbrella. The umbrella is going to be a lot more diffused but with the umbrella you cannot modify the color temperature. So if you want to use these in conjunction you can. But be mindful when you do it stack and put the colored gel at the lower part and the diffuser at the top. That way if the light bounces off of here and reflects onto the set that you're not bouncing that colored light or that colored light from the light head, the yellow light, but whatever you're going to bounce is going to first be re kind of reflected off of this and it's going to have a, a better effect on your set. To attach it, there are these clips and you can just clip your gels on. And that's okay if it's not completely straight right now. But then you can go ahead and expand that. that it's going to tighten it up a little bit more. And that's how you can attach the color gel to something like this OmniLight. Now that we have this attached, I'm going to go ahead and show you kind of how it looks both in that wide position and also the spot position. Then you can also see some of the effects of this gel. So I make sure that the light is in, the switch is in the off position and then I will plug it in. Now once the light is plugged in and there are other people on the set, you do want to let them know that you're going to be lighting a light like this because it can be a little bit intense. So I'm going to turn the light on and then you can kind of see how it's reflecting back, but you can also see some of the effects on the wall. And right now I have it in the wide position with this thumb knob in the lower position. And that is kind of a wide throw. And then I can make a narrower beam. Now you're not seeing a lot of effect of it because I'm actually using this diffuser. If I were to remove the diffuser, then you're going to see a bit more of effect of that spot. And so here is the spot position and then also the wider throw. And that's how you can adjust the, the narrow or the narrow beam and the wider beam for the Omni light. And that's kind of an overview of the Omni light. It does get quite hot and you can also notice that the color is really on the yellow end. So if I were to mix this light with an LED light that's daylight balanced or I were to mix it with daylight itself, 
or even a fluorescent that's daylight balanced, I want to make sure that I use some sort of gel that's going to bring that color temperature closer to my other light sources. Unless I want to communicate maybe some tension and then I might be using a yellow light on one side and something that is bluer on the other. And that's kind of the basic setup to this. Now, when you're going to take one of these lights down, you do want to make sure that you, after you turn it off, you let it sit for a few minutes so that it cools. Because if you start to jar it around right after it has been on, the, light, the bulb is very susceptible to damage. So I'm going to let this cool off and then I'm going to show you some of the other lights. The next light I want to show you is this total light. Now the total light is horizontal. It also comes with this protective screen, which you always got to make sure that you use when using the total light because it does have a bulb in there that is very susceptible to damage and if it explodes, you want to make sure that you have the protective screen to protect the members of your cast and crew. On the back side of the total light, you can see where you put the power, but you'll notice again, there's no power switch for this. There's a knob here that you can use to adjust the angle of the light. There are also these little flags and reflectors that you can use to sh help shape or reflect the light. On the side of it, you will have that same type of knob that you had on the Omni light and also same type of mount that will go on the light stand. So loosen the knob, place it on the light stand and tighten it down. There's light modifiers that can also go on the total light. We could use things like the umbrella or we can also use the gel frame that we used earlier. It goes right in this slot right here. Just loosen the knob and slide it into the slot and then tighten it down. And then this could be used to color balance this light with other light sources such as daylight or LED or daylight balanced fluorescent lights. And that's how to attach that. Like I said, you can also attach the umbrella to it and you would attach it in the same place that you attached the gel frame. One of the other light modifiers that we can put on the total light is one of these flags. Now the flag will attach to the side of the light using this flexible shaft. When you attach it, there's two ends that are kind of forked. One will rotate and you want to put that rotating end on the flag and the other one is going to go right on this little receptacle on the side of the light stand. And just slide it in might take a little bit of force and it's kind of some wiggling to get it in there and then you can attach this flag in two places. You can attach it to this little receptacle here or one on the side and it again has that little forked end to it. We just kind of plug it in there and then we can use this to shape the light or block particular area. This total light has a very, very wide throw, but we can help kind of mitigate some of that by use of light modifiers like this. I'm going to go ahead and power this light on before I do. One thing to take note of again is that there is not a switch on the total light, so I want to make sure that whatever power cable I use has the built-in switch. So plug the power cable into the light head, make sure that the switch is in the off position, and then go ahead and plug it in. Now before I would illuminate this on the set, if there were others around, that I would definitely let them know that I'm going to turn this on because it can be quite bright. But I'm going to go ahead and turn it on, and you can see that it, like the other lights, have a very warm tone to it, which means it's low in color temperature and kind of on the yellow end. 
but it has somewhat of a wide throw. And this particular one has a, a frosted bulb that softens that light up a little bit. Now, although this light is kind of on the yellow end, and I can use gels to change the color temperature, if I'm only using the tungsten halogen lights on a set, then I don't need to use a colored gel unless I'm doing a, some sort of effect that is changing the mood. Reason being, if I want to make this into a white light, all I would need to do is white balance for this color, and then it would create very a white light that has been corrected, that is, by the camera's white balance feature. But this is kind of the basics to the total light. One of the other lights that is in the kit is the V light. Now the V light, when you first pull it out of the kit, is not in a usable position. The first thing you're going to want to do is loosen this little knob just a little bit and then rotate the light head. Now it can rotate left or right. Rotate it and then tighten that knob down and then you can put it on top of the light stand. Get it into position. Then open up the reflectors. Now this can be used to help shape the light to broaden it or bring it into somewhat of a narrow beam. But this, like the total light, is a horizontal light. This particular light, you'll notice that there is a bulb there, but it's behind a piece of protective glass. So this one doesn't have protective screen, but protective glass. There, so you don't have to worry about touching the bulb in this because it is be behind that glass, but there's really no need to touch that glass. And, and you can adjust the reflector as such. Now, in order to attach light modifiers, such as an umbrella, you're going to put it at the base right here. There's a little knob here that you can loosen up, and then you can open up your umbrella and place it in there. And you can use a reflective umbrella like this one, or you can use one that you can shoot the light through. Or you can also use things like the gel frame. But this time, you're going to put it at the bottom here and just slide it into the slot and lock it down. Now, with this, you want to make sure that you don't put these gel frames really, really close to the light head because it can cause this to melt because they do get so hot. And then you can adjust that reflector. Now, speaking about these lights being hot, this is going to be true for all of these halogen tungsten lights, is you don't want to use them in a strictly pointing down position because pointing it down like that and keeping it kind of narrow, you're going to have all of that heat retained and, and it's going to get too hot and it's going to overheat. So you want to make sure that you don't point those light heads straight down because we want to make sure that it is having enough airflow around it to keep it cool. Now you will notice that this particular light, the V-Light, has a built-in switch and also a built-in power cable. So making sure that the light switch is off and then I can go ahead and plug this thing in. And then you can kind of see that light. Now I've softened it with this diffuser and I also have a blue gel on the top of it. But we can move it a little bit so you can kind of see the effects of it. Now you will notice that with these light modifiers, you can actually see the line where that light, light modifier ends and begins. And that is something to be mindful of on the set, that you don't want to have a kind of a two-tone spill light kind of coming through there. So be mindful of how that light is shaped and also how it is being thrown onto the set. But that is kind of the basics to the V light. This, like any of the other lights, you want to make sure cools off before you break it down. Otherwise, that bulb is going to be really susceptible to damage and it'll fail too quickly.
One of the other lights in the light kit is this little pro light. It's kind of like a mini spotlight. It has a little built-in barn doors here. It's kind of like a mini version of the Omni light. Now these barn doors can be removed and you can replace it with a glass diffuser as well that's also found in the kit. To remove this, you unscrew this small knob here and then that will loosen the barn door so you can remove it. And then your glass diffuser has the same type of attachment and then you can replace it here. But you cannot use both the glass diffuser and the barn doors at the same time. So we're going to open this up and take a look at the back. Now this particular light has a built-in switch. There's also a little focus knob. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on the light stand and tighten it down. This has a light modifier attachment that is almost identical to the V-Light. So you can attach either your gel frame to this. There's actually a smaller gel frame or you can use the larger gel frame. And you can also place an umbrella in there. Now this smaller light, smaller gel frame looks like this. And inside the kit there are small gels. A lot of times I don't like to use this one though. I prefer actually to use the larger gel frame on it because it has a wider area. So I'll be sure that I'm going to get kind of the, the full measure of that so I don't have any spill. But that's just my particular preference for using the gel frames. Now, because this light has a built-in switch, I'm going to make sure that the cable that I use doesn't have the built-in switch. And then I'm going to fire this up and you can kind of see how this little focus knob works with it. So I have my cable that does not have a switch. Make sure that this is in the off position and on the kind of hanging from the light head is this other cable. So I'm just going to plug that in and plug it into the wall. I can go ahead and turn this light on again. I would let people know if they were around that um, I'm going to be striking this light. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and then you can see the beam of that. I'm going to slowly move this over. You do need to be really careful when moving these lights when they're on or if they've just been on because that bulb is very susceptible to damage. So I'm going to move that a little bit so you can kind of see what position this, this is in. Right now I kind of have it kind of midway between and I'm going to rotate that and now I'm in the spot position and I'm going to spread it out and you can kind of see how that circle of light, that beam angle changes. I'm going to tighten that down and then you can see kind of the use of those barn doors. So I can get kind of a narrower bit of light coming through here, especially if I shape it a little bit more. And then you can kind of see how those barn doors work with this to shape the light. And that is how to use this little pro light. The last of the lights that you're going to find in these kits is a reefer light. It's, it is the softbox light. It comes in this bag. So when you take it out, you want to make sure that you don't touch the bulb because this light, out of all of the lights, the bulb is, is exposed when you first take it out of the kit. And then as I pull that out of the bag, you can kind of see that the bulb is exposed. Now we will not use this light with an exposed bulb, but just be mindful, especially if you're going to reach in and take that out, you don't want to touch the bulb. So I carefully open it up and I'm going to pull the light out of the bag and then also I will find that there is the cover to the, the soft box that is in there as well. So this has a cable that's attached to it and 
then also inside here you're going to find that there is this cover. It's kind of wrapped around a cardboard tube. We'll get to this in a little while, the, the use of the cover, but show you how to attach this to a light stand. Now you want to make sure that you're using the heavy duty light stand or the larger light stand, larger diameter, slightly taller. When you first pull the light out of the bag, you're going to loosen this handle and then this is going to swing down. Then go ahead and tighten it and that places it in a position that is going to be useful for you. So then loosen the knob and place it on the light stand and lock it down. Now if I wanted to rotate this, I want to make sure that I loosen a column. The other thing that I want to make sure I do, because this is heavy, on kind of one end, I would rotate this so it is over one of the legs, so it's not going to tip forward. Now, as you can kind of see it kind of sticking out like this, I want to expand it. To expand it, I release this Velcro and then slowly kind of pull this apart just a little bit. And then I'm going to loosen this little knob because that is the locking knob for this. Then I'm going to take my fingers like this, my finger and thumb, I'll lift this and rotate it, and I'm going to hold this cage right like this and I'm going to push it back. I'm going to push it back, push it back, push it back, and I'm not going to touch the bulb. Once I push it all the way back, it'll pop into position. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm ready to use it yet. One, I want to make sure that I tighten this down, that locking knob, so that it doesn't collapse. And then two, I need to make sure that I use a diffuser on this. Because the bulb is open, I want to make sure that I'm protecting my cast members and my crew members. In case the bulb fails, I don't want any of those pieces to come out. You'll notice that there are these little spikes on the end of this softbox and these little grommet holes. So go ahead and just spread the softbox cover over. There's some Velcro that'll help it attach. And then that is kind of in position and ready to be used. You'll notice that this light does not have a switch built into it. So the cable that I use for this must have a switch. The other thing that you'll notice is that in order to attach any sort of diffuse, or not diffuser, but gel to this, I'm going to have to attach it to the outside of the soft box. Inside the bag, there are these rolls of gels of different densities, much like the other gels that you're going to find in the kit. So you're going to have to figure out which one you are going to use to do your proper color balancing. But if this were the only light I was using, I didn't have any window light, wasn't contending with any other light sources, I would just go ahead, use the light the way it is, and do a white balance. But if I did need to attach a gel to this, I'm going to go ahead and place it over the top here and then I will use either a clothespin or these large paper clips to attach it. Now it is easier to attach it to the top and let it kind of drape over and then put the rest of the clips on than it is to attach it on the side. Rotate this. You want to make sure that it's straight and that there isn't any places where it's going to spill out. But again, when you drape it on, drape it from the top. 
drape it over the top and don't drape it from the side because if you do that, then you're going to be fighting with gravity just to attach it. So once you put it up there with one clip, then it's going to be easier to get the rest of them on. And that's how we could attach a color gel to the front of the reef of light. In order to plug it in, make sure that you have the cable that has the built-in switch and you're going to plug it into the cable that dangles from the back end of it. Make sure the switch is in the off position and then you can go ahead and plug it into the wall. And then I'm ready to go ahead and run this light. And this particular light is of a much softer quality because it has that built-in softbox. It is still a very warm light as far as in actual temperature, so it will get just as hot as the other lights, and you don't want this operating shooting straight down because then again it's going to retain too much heat. These reefer lights do have a place where some of that heat can escape out of the back. And these lights also are very susceptible to damage as you move them around. So you need to be quite careful as you do that. And that is how to set up the reef -a light With one kit that you have, you have four lights. There, you, there will either be a reef -a light a total light, a small spotlight, an omni light, or you're going to have a reef -a light which is one of these, omni light spotlight and the V light. The V and the total light are the different lights. Those again are the horizontal types of lights. But with the whole kit you can make some really great lighting, four-point lighting or you can combine kits to do five-point lighting or light your set in other ways. And that is kind of the basics to these tungsten halogen lights.